square and square roots. Here we have a square shaped land whose side is 1.2 meters. What would be the area of this land? Area is equal to 1.2 the whole square, which is equal to 1.2 into 1.2, that is equal to 1.44 meters square. We have one more square land. The side of this square land is 2.8. 13 meters. What would be the area? Area is equal to 2.13 square, which is equal to 2.13 into 2.13, which is equal to 4.5369 meters square. Similarly, we have another square shaped land whose side is 3.414 meter. What would be the area? Area is equal to 3.414 the whole square. That is equal to 3.414 into 3.414, which is equal to 11.655396 meter square. Here the square of 1.2 is 1.44. The square of 2.13 is 4.5369. The square of 3.414 is 11.655396. The number of digits after the decimal point in 1.2 is 1. After squaring 1.2, the number of digits after the decimal point is 2 in the number 1.44. And similarly, for 2.13, the number of digits after the decimal point is 2. After squaring, there are 4 digits after the decimal point. For 3.414, the number of digits before squaring is 3. After squaring, the number of digits is 6. So what do you understand from this? Yes, if a decimal number has even or odd number of digits after its decimal point, then the square will have even number of digits after its decimal point. If a decimal number A has n number of digits after decimal point, then the square A square will have 2n digits after its decimal point. We know that the square root is the inverse operation of square. Here the number of digits after the decimal point will be reversed. The number of digits of decimal number after the decimal point in the square root value will have half of the digits after the decimal point in the square root number. In decimal numbers also we can find the square root value. How to find the square root of 1.21? We know that the square root of 121, that is 11. Square root of 1.21 is 1 1.1. The number of digits after the decimal point in the square will have half of the digits after the decimal point in the square root number. What would be the square root of 0 0.00? We know that the square root of 49 is 7. So the square root of 0 0.0049 is 0 0.07. When there are no digits before the number, we have to consider zeros as digits. If the square root of 7056 is 84, then what is the value of the square root of 70.56. Good, it is 8.4. If we do not have the value of the square root of 7056, then how can we find the value of 70.56? We have to use the division method to find the square root of 
56. We use these steps to find the square root of decimal numbers in division method. The steps we have used in the square root of normal numbers, similar steps will be followed. Step 1. To find the square root of a decimal number, we put bars on the integral part, that is 70 of the number, in the usual manner, and place the bars on the decimal part, that is 56, beginning with the first decimal place. We then proceed as usual. We get 70.56. Step 2. Find the largest number whose square is less than or equal to the given number in the leftmost group. So 64 is lesser than 70, which is lesser than 81. 8 square is lesser than 70, which is lesser than 9 square. Take 8 as the divisor and quotient. Write 64 under the leftmost group. Step 3. Subtracting the square number from the leftmost group, we get the remainder. By subtracting 64 from 70, we get 6 as the remainder. Step 4. Bring down the next group and write it next to the remainder. We get the new dividend. Now the new dividend is 656. Step 5. Double the divisor and enter it with a blank on its right. Since 56 is the decimal part, so put a decimal point in the quotient. Step 6. Now observe the new dividend, that is 656. Guess a largest possible digit to fill the blank which also becomes the new digit in the quotient, such that when the new digit is multiplied to the new quotient, the product is less than or equal to the dividend. In this case, the last digit is 6. By multiplying 4 by itself, we get 6 as the unit's place. So let us try taking 4 as the quotient. 164 into 4 is equal to 656. So 656 is exactly suitable. So now the new digit in the quotient is 4. Get the remainder. Since the remainder is 0 and no bar is left, therefore square root of 70.56 is equal to 8.4. Find the square root of 7.29. Step 1. Put the bars on the integral part, that is 7, of the number in the usual manner, and place the bars on the decimal part, that is 29, beginning with the first decimal place. Proceed as usual. We get 7.29. Step 2. Find the largest number whose square is less than or equal to the given number in the leftmost group. 4 is lesser than 7, which is lesser than 9. 2 square is lesser than 7, which is lesser than 3 square. Take 2 as the divisor and the quotient. Write 4 under the leftmost group. Step 3. Subtracting the square number from the leftmost group, we get the remainder. By subtracting 4 from 7, we get 3 as the remainder. Step 4. Bring down the next group and write it next to the remainder. We get the new dividend. Now the new dividend is 329. Step 5. Double the divisor and enter it with a blank on its right. Since 86 is the decimal part, so put a decimal point in the quotient. Step 6. Now observe the new dividend, that is, 329. Guess the largest possible digit to fill the blank, which also becomes the new digit in the quotient, such that, when the new digit is multiplied to the new quotient, the product is less than or equal to the dividend. In this case, the last digit is 9. So which number 
if when multiplied gives 9 in the units place. By multiplying 3 by itself, we get 9 in the units place. Or by multiplying 7 by itself, we get 9 in the units place. So let us try by taking 4 as a quotient. 43 into 3 is equal to 129. 47 into 7 is equal to 329. 329 is exactly suitable. So now the new digit in the quotient is 7. Get the remainder. Since the remainder is 0 and no bar is left, therefore square root of 7.29 is equal to 2.7. Note, consider a number 176.341. Put bars on both integral part and decimal part. In what way do we put the bars on the decimal part and the integral part? Notice, for 176, we start from the unit's place, close to the decimal, and move towards the left. The first bar is over 76, and the second bar over 1. For 341, we start from the decimal and move towards the right. The first bar is over 34, and the second bar we put 0 after 1 and make 0 0.3410. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Yes, if a decimal number has even or odd number of digits after its decimal point, then the square will have even number of digits after its decimal point. If a decimal number A has n number of digits after decimal point, then the square A square will have 2n digits after its decimal point. The number of digits of decimal number after the decimal point in the square root value will have half of the digits after the decimal point in the square root number.